from Screen Junkie Studios in the heart of Los Angeles, this is Screen Junkies Movie Fight. Now your host, Andy Signore. Greetings, Screen Junkies, and welcome to all new movie fights in an all new set. Oh my goodness, it's the uh, movie fights. <laughs> it's the Screen Junkie Studio live for movie fights, and I've already done a b- huge blumber. I'm, I'm, I'm doing great. Welcome, we're so excited to have you here. We have so amazing, uh, fun fights to fight today. We have best Will Smith movie, best movie heroine, what kids' property should be turned into a hard edge reboot in honor of that Power Rangers trailer that w- was making around the web, um, and lots more fun stuff. So, we're really excited. We're excited to be here in this new space. Please stay with fun new stuff in the future coming, so stay tuned. I want to thank, obviously, Road Mike, so many other things for helping us put this together. This is such a fun thing. How's it look, guys? Isn't this pretty cool? This looks yeah. awesome. Hopefully, you guys at home agree. Uh, we're, we're working on adding new things. People keep adding scoreboards, things that we're working on it. We know. Thank you. Keep suggesting. Keep watching. We love your support. All right. Um, so, so many battles coming up. As you know, we're keeping the feature. If you want to skip through your battles, you can. Bottom right-hand corner is pick your fight. If you don't like something we're talking about, don't leave. Just skip to the next fight. Um, also, quick important note. We had to change RSS feeds on iTunes, so if you listen to us there, Apologize for the confusion, but click the new link in the description below um, to find out and subscribe to the new one. Please, please, please. If you haven't done it before, you've done it, we would really love for you to do it now. It's in a new, fi- new home, new place. We lo- need your support. So please go check it out and surpri- uh, subscribe to that iTunes link below. Um, we'll update all the old links as well, so please uh, check it out. Um, all that said, uh, it's very exciting. We have three newbies here. It's the Rookie Rumble. We want to try and introduce some new personalities into the show and see who sticks. If you don't stick, we're not going to see you again, so no pressure, guys. But let's meet our fighters. Today's fighters are Steve Zargoza, host of SourceFed, first-time fighter. Mark Andreco, writer of Wonder Woman 77 and Batwoman, first-time fighter. Matt Robb. Creative Director of Smosh Games and Tobuscus, First Time Fighter. Wow. And don't forget to keep us all honest. On the Dan Cam, it's Dan Merle who's here. Now, before we get to this fight, Jason's next to you. We wanted to take a quick moment here to address something that we found out on Friday. One of our heroes, I'd say, a really iconic member, Leonard Nimoy, passed away. I just wanted to take a quick moment. I know, like myself, you guys are huge Trekkies. Yeah. How do we feel about this? This is sucks, right? I yeah, mean, it's like the worst. It's Spock. I mean, you know, Captain Kirk was the captain, but Spock was like the, the heart of the show, which is ironic because he was a Vulcan <laughs> who had no emotions. But yeah, and Nimoy, too, like people see him as Spock, but he was also like he directed Star Trek Four, which is one of the best and three men and, three and, a baby. Men and a baby, yeah. So, and I'm gonna awkwardly hand this microphone to Jason now, so he can. That's a talk <laughs> Jason, my you shirt. said it too. How how would Spock feel about this right now? Uh, he wouldn't have any feelings about it at all. Oh. But I will say this: that with Nimoy's death, it is almost like a Star Trek has almost died a little bit because he has was in Star Trek longer than William Shatner because he was in the original pilot and the yep. only cast member that Roddenberry decided to keep. So it's like a little piece of Star Trek has actually died. It's true, sad. and he's the only one who's been in all of them, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Oh. Well, that, that was. was, that was <laughs> well, anyway, we wanted to take a quick, yeah. quick moment. We're big fans. Anybody, I'll, I imagine no one's here is going to say they're not a fan of Leonard Nimoy. Oh, no, no. no. I grew up, my favorite memory. We're not going to fight about this one. No. My favorite part of him was uh, I loved In Search of when I was a little kid. He hosted In Search of. He replaced Rod Serling. And his voice with that In Search of used to scare the crap out of me as a kid. So yeah. that's what I. I I mean, Ballad of Bilbo Baggins. I was just going to say, can <laughs> yeah. we listen to that on a loop for the whole show? It's just a 10 hour memorial? loop? Yeah. yeah. No, and I think it's, uh, most people don't remember, he directed uh, one of my favorites, one is part four, The Voyage yeah. Home. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Is he, that the whale one? And yeah. three. He, yeah. Three and four. Three, he directed. And he produced six, or and wrote, I think helped write six. Story credit on six. A lot more coming out about him. It's such a huge loss. We just want to take a moment. Thank you, Leonard Nimoy. We live long and prosper. Live long and prosper. I can't, <laughs> I can do it. There we there go. We go. Did it. All right. Moving on to the exciting part of the show now. Very exciting. Monday Mania is continuing. The winner of this battle will go to the semifinals to take on Mike Carlson, who won last week, and Nick Mundy. Are you guys prepared for that? Uh, Matt Robb here. You uh, hey. Smosh Games. Hi, welcome. Thanks. Thanks. I'm a rookie fighter. Uh, I'm really excited. I brought a switchblade. I wasn't sure what kind of fight it was, but I'm excited. I'm ready. Let's do this. Fun fact about you, your parents own the largest chain of comic book stores in the country in the 90s. So right. you you better know your stuff. Wow. I know a few of my stuff. Yeah, yeah, one or two stuffs. I <laughs> you know a few of your stuff. A few of my stuff. Well, to be fair, stuff. Matt works with us, and we argue all the time off camera, and I all thought, you know what, time. let's give him a shot to yeah. argue here on yeah. camera and yeah. see if you pull it off. I can't wait to disappoint you. 
<laughs> Next to him, Caesar goes and welcome from SourceFed. A lot of fans have been requesting you come on the show. Thank you for finally coming here. Yeah. And then next to him, also, you've been asked here to get a lot. I know you've been, I'm so excited to finally have you. A Screen Junkie Show regular, Mark and Draco. Thank you for being here, man. I'm glad. It's fun. I've been, I was feeling a little neglected, so I'm glad I finally, <laughs> I'm glad somebody got sick and I had to fill in. No, no. <laughs> you guys all, no one got sick here. We picked you all. We were very excited to have you. And let's get to today's battle and the great words. Oh, wait, before I do that, everyone understand the rules since you're newbies. I'm taking points on the arguments here, not because my movie's the best. You really got to tell me your pitch, and then you got to tell me why the other two pitches are wrong. I'm looking for the best argument. That's what's going to win this. Creativity, passion, all that stuff. Makes sense? Anyone have any questions before we begin? No. no. Then, in the great words of Ron Burgundy and many others. Now let's do this. This is where we fight. <laughs> Ooh. Wow. Round one. Fuck you. I'll stab a guy. I'm ready for this. <laughs> now, big news dropped in, in, on the internet when this uh, Power Rangers short film came out. This edgy reboot with Katie Stackoff and James Vanderbeek. Power slash Rangers. Power slash Rangers <laughs> uh, is how they're trying to cop get away with the copyright. Saban Entertainment is not happy. They've already pulled it off Vimeo and YouTube. Um, what do we think about this uh, this reboot? Is really the question. Um, should this reboot, uh, which came from Jordan uh, Jonathan Ellis on Twitter, should the new Power Rangers movie be like the gritty fan short? Is what the question here. It was an interesting take. Um, do we love it? Do we hate it? We're going to start with you, Matt. What do you think? Here's the thing. I, as a child growing up with Power Rangers, I loved Power Rangers, and now as an adult, I think it's so cool that there's this hyper violent, just drug and sex riddled thing. But I don't think the movie should be that. I'm gonna I'm gonna side with Jason David Frank. Only because I think that he has a point. He said, uh, he, he posted a vlog to all his Frankenauts, I don't know what he calls them, to all his people saying that he thinks uh, it was a lot of fun, but it should not be a Saban approved thing because there's still a massive fan base for Power Rangers and they're all kids, right? So why would you want to have a giant kid based fan film like that turn into a very violent film? I don't think that we as, as a country would really want that movie, right? Kids can't go see that movie. Kids aren't gonna go see a movie with Katie Sackhoff swearing and doing coke and heads being blown off. As much as I wanna see that, I don't think that should be the movie because you're not gonna draw an adventurous crowd with that. It's not gonna happen. Steve, do you wanna see it? I do wanna see it. I, I gotta be honest though, I'm a 32 year old man, so the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers kind of was, uh, was a little bit not great in my day. I was just kind of like, it was all my cousins and, and nephews that were like, I love the Power Rangers. And I was like, I don't know what this is at all. But I mean, yeah, I, I, I'm all for gritty, like intense violence all the time. And look, when I was a kid, I was watching Aliens and Predator. I mean, maybe that's because my parents were real bad. But I mean, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think kids, it's going to stop kids from seeing the movie. They're going to see it one way or another. And I think the parents now want to show their kids Power Rangers in kind of like a new gritty, intense light like that. And why not? We keep treating kids like they're, like they're dumb and they, you know, they don't understand that this stuff isn't real and... You know, let's start uh, treating kids like adults now. Maybe see the world change a little bit. Wait, the Power Rangers are real? <laughs> you didn't know? They all live uh, inside of like, us. Can I change my answer? <laughs> yeah, Mark, what's your answer? <laughs> uh, I, I am a little older than you, uh, a lot older than you, and I couldn't care less about the Power <laughs> Rangers. I tried to watch it once in college, and I obviously wasn't stoned enough because that screeching woman just made me oh. kill myself. I'm like, why? Rita Moreno's got an Oscar, a Tony, a Grammy, and an Emmy. Why is it? Why? Oh, that's not Rita Moreno. <laughs> um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, I, I want to see it. I, I want to see it if James Vanderbeek is in it, because as much as it is, I never thought I would say this. A little bit of him makes everything better. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to get my beak wet. Oh, with the beak, Dawson oh, girl, don't go there. Did girl. We, so do we all like the cast? You all like that cast? I thought the cast was cool. I, I do love that James Vanderbeek was cast as because I was a fan growing up. He was cast as Rocky, who was the second Red Ranger, right? So he was like the second oh, Doctor, of right? Yeah, it's okay, everybody. <laughs> no. Am I right, guys? I Red mean. Rangers, right? Uh, no, he was cast as the second Red Ranger, which was kind of cool because nobody liked the second Red Ranger and they addressed it. it. It was a fan film, pure and pure. It was made for the fans. It wasn't made for kids. It wasn't made for anybody who watches it now. It was made for us, the kids that grew up and loved it as a kid and now we're all into this you know, post-ironic, hyper-violent culture. That's what we love. Right? Yeah, I think there's what? room for both of it, though. There's room, I mean, there's plenty of Power Rangers material out there for the kids. Sure. Like, almost a trash amount of, sure. of stuff for kids to watch. And I don't agree necessarily with Saban having to rip the thing from everywhere that is being posted in YouTube well, and Vimeo just, and everything He's just being like a bully. And, yeah. and all these websites are being cowardly about it. Of he's course. just being a bully. No one made any profit on it. No. It's, a, it's obviously a pastiche and a parody of, of that. It's, it is. Fa it's fair use. 
Juice. It's very clearly you've got references to Kill Bill, you've got references to, to Pacific Rim and Starship Minority Troopers. Report. Minority yeah. Report. Yeah, like mm-hmm. all that stuff is in there. So it's very clearly a fan film, not just using that word as protection. Like it's very clearly a, a movie made for fans. So Saban going out there and being like, well, you're going to confuse the audience because they think this is what the real Power Rangers is. And you know what's different about the Power Rangers today as opposed to last week? People are talking about them now. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Exactly. More so than they were when, when Max Landis' script was circulating around the web. Well, they're both making good arguments for yes, but you, what, why? I still don't understand. I don't why. think that it's going to be a marketable movie. I don't. I think that it's very confusing. You can't release a dark... It's the same reason why Disney can't put out like a Dark Avengers movie. You know what I mean? You can't put out a gritty movie like that because it's confusing the brand. You're going to have all these kids and these parents. Think about Middle America, guys. Think about all the kids out there. Middle, I don't Am- like to think Middle about Middle America. Middle America. What are the best-selling video games? Grand Theft Auto. Middle America buys this stuff for their kids. Mm. They buy. They don't buy the. They don't buy the movies. They're not taking them to the movies. I think you're overestimating the power of the the nostalgia for Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. I don't think there's anyone who loves Power Rangers. I think they they like it. They have a, a nostalgia. I was when I was seven and picking my nose eating play doh. I watched the Power Rangers. There's totally. There totally is. Look at all of the love this thing has gotten. The video itself got like 15 million. Because views it made it hit. interesting. And gave it production I, look, value. And I and honestly think it's one of those things where the name is back out there. Suddenly people who don't, who could care less are starting to care. And you throw out this big kind of like, and also ballsy moves in Hollywood are kind of a rare thing these days. And I feel like making a big, gritty, violent Power Rangers movie would be such a ballsy move that suddenly the masses would be like, whoa, maybe we need to see this. It's I like, want to be clear. You two want to team up against him. You'll both win points. Oh hell no! I are you doing that? Totally, it sort of think feels it like you are. Yeah, of course. I'll, yeah, I'll you, you. Yeah. Uh oh! So it's YouTube it. versus Matt. So hurry up! One, 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 one last, one last uh, argument here, Matt. Go for it. I don't think that it's a marketable movie. I think that it is confusing the brand. I think that it's going to to, to scare off a lot of the parents that wouldn't take their kids to it. Because I think he, you're dumb and you smell like turds. Oh, he's right. He's right. <laughs> Not a good argument. Mark, would you like to end your team stronger? <laughs> your I argument. Think, yeah. Besides the fact that you are dumb and, in fact, do smell like that. too. <laughs> uh, my argument's better. It's based in facts. <laughs> There's a fact, uh, too. The fa- you just said that you don't think this is marketable. How many millions of people have watched this trailer? How many people... Like me, because who would never free. have gone. How many people would never have gone to a Power Rangers movie? If I saw this trailer for that movie, I'd be like, that looks so effing weird. I'm going to get high and go see this movie. And also, let me jump onto the idea that let's say these guys come back and say Kickstarter, and they're like, we want to make this movie. We want to fight the big guy. We're the little guy that wants to make this movie. I feel like people are going to back the hell out of Because those go thing. so well, Zach well, Braff. Well, <laughs> well, hey, he got to make his trash film, didn't he? <laughs> Zach Braff is no the beak so uh, that's true all right then you guys you're, you're veronica mars how about that one that, that went well too mm. yeah it only made this like, would be a great vod movie that's yeah, what i'm veronica hearing that's mars. what i'm hearing it doesn't sound like it's going to be an avengers class movie it sounds like this is a great vod digital download movie the best thing for these guys to do is be to change the names change it to something else call it like energy gods or something <laughs> like that and do the exact same thing and do the galaxy quest version of star trek yeah just Power call rangers. it like i don't know like pacific rim or something <laughs> just put it out and it'll be yeah. like a really good because america robots. wants to see more of that uh-oh so i get Last, I'm going to give you one last shot, Matt. And then the reason this shouldn't be the gritty, the, shouldn't be the new Power Rangers. The movie. reason this shouldn't be the new Power Rangers movie is I think that there's a common ground between the the hokey, colorful Power Rangers TV show and this gritty thing. I don't think this should be it. I think there's something in there. Also, the story was told. He told everything he needed to tell in 14 minutes. Why would you need to see that again? Have you been to a movie lately? Nope. <laughs> that, that's <laughs> most of them. Yeah, Dan, well. any thoughts from you? Um, Nothing to correct there. We're about to make my ruling. <laughs> well, I mean, there's a couple of things. Uh, there have been, you know, Uh-oh. just speaking to the amount of Power Rangers material that's out there, I, I counted there's approximately 20 different Power Rangers television shows that have been made. And, all using the same footage. And uh, nobody sure. cares about it at all. And, and one thing that I would correct <laughs> Mark on, and Mark said that there's nobody out there that, that loves the Power Rangers. We have a friend named Andre Meadows. AKA oh, yeah, Black, there you AKA go. AKA Black Nerd that would disagree with that. Black Nerd is a huge yeah, fan. Yeah, so I think, Matt, you sort of pulled it through there in the end because, and oh. as the only fan, I think it's they're being a little sour on it. You make a good point that oh. why wouldn't it be in the middle if we're going to put all this Thank money you. into it and Matt Robb gets the point. Yes. Oh, I see. Victory. A vote oh. for mediocrity. Oh. Can you get tough. a half point off for smelling like turds? No, no, no. Uh, that was him, by the way. As funny as that was, I can't count <laughs> That doesn't how the show works. It's not funny. You're not. You guys aren't here in the studio. He does smell like. Yeah, turds. there's no. Got, there's no joke. I've That's, got Charles Schultz stink lines coming off of me right now. It's pretty bad. He doesn't smell like turds. <laughs> he doesn't smell like turds. All right, it's cool. Fine. Sitting Thanks. right next to him. All right. He smells like round poop. two. Matt's on the board. Wow. Round two. Uh, following the Power Rangers, and that's Hard Edge. We thought we'd continue it. Um, what is the Hard Edge gritty reboot you'd want to see of a kids franchise? 
Uh, Gem and the Power, uh, Gem and the Holograms uh, came out. There's a little bit of an edge to them. I don't think they're going to go as hard as uh, Power Rangers oh, did. They're, they're doing girls. She's going to get her salad toss. <laughs> <laughs> there is a hard but... salad tossing scene. <laughs> She's doing girls. <laughs> it's, 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 it's truly outrageous. But clearly, yeah. Ah, what the Snapchat's dang. about, right? Negative points um, from me. <laughs> uh oh. No sign of puns on this show. But yeah. for real, the question for Fight Two: uh, Which kid's property would you like to see get a hard edge reboot? One you want you want to see, and now we're gonna start with you, Steve. What's your pick? Uh, I chose Samurai Jack oh. as a hard, gritty, awesome live action. I mean, I don't know. I like Gendy uh, uh, Tartakovsky a lot, and I feel like in, uh, Hotel Transylvania is not so good. But let's say that um, you know they gave him the opportunity to just go balls to the wall and make an, a super awesome. I mean, if I had it my way, it pr- would probably stay animated. But if we if we're going live action for the sake of the argument of the Power Rangers, kind of like I don't know. But I guess Power Rangers wasn't animated, so it doesn't really matter. But we're just talking about kids shows. Mm-hmm. Anyway, are franchise. you drunk? <laughs> yes, very drunk. <laughs> I was promised cocaine. You know? <laughs> All right, Samurai Jack, we'll come back to you. What's your pick, Mark? The Never Ending Story. Ooh, okay. <laughs> I want to see a post apocalyptic. I want to see that kid. That kid comes back from that fantasy world. He's an adult now, and no one believes him, and he's on drugs. And do sort of uh, train spotting meets Mad Max meets the, you know meets uh, Dark Crystal. The Jonathan Brand. You need to story. write that comic. Yeah. Never any story is already gritty as hell. I'll fight you on it that. It is pretty gritty. It's scary. It's good. Yeah. All right, but before we start, Matt, right. uh, Matt what's your pick? Uh, I'm gonna go with another uh, uh, just beloved child's uh, property, Captain Planet and the Planeteers. Ah. Captain Planet. We've kind of seen like mock dark versions, the Don Cheadle Funny or Die stuff, but I would love to see like a really good, just like a gritty. Because I mean, look where we are in the world, right? The, the Captain Planet was all about like pollution's gonna get us, and it, it did. Liberal <laughs> hogwash. Yeah. All right. Why? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't know. I just wanted to agree. Now that yeah. we have them all out, yeah, which you guys were saying Never Ending Story is gritty already? Well, yeah, it's already kind of messed up. What is it, Lars von Trier directed that? Or who directed it? <laughs> no, it was one of the Lars von <laughs> that's, that's who's going to direct my version. So who's the German guy that directed it? Wolfgang Peterson. Wolfgang Peterson. Yeah. There yeah. we go, yeah. It's already, I mean, Gamora. There goes like, our German audience. Yeah. I know, right? Oh, no. How dare they? Wolfgang Peterson's great. In the line of fire, he's on it, right? He's yeah, yeah. No, but I mean, no. That I means love an Wolf entirely Wolf different thing if it was a Lars von Trier title. <laughs> Could you imagine? It opens with Willem Dafoe's penis just huge on the screen. With, the, with that white flying thing. Yeah, he's Falcor. The penis it. is Falcor. Yeah, oh, there okay. you go. Yeah. Keep it on track. <laughs> anyway. Uh, and we could have, we could have like Jay-Z redo that The Never Ending Story thing uh, by Lamal. Oh, uh, yeah. Throw so, a wait, you want to rap? In there? Oh, no, no, no. No, no. no. no Look, no, I, I am a huge Never Ending Story fan, and I would not like to see some sort of like remade bastardization with Hollywood getting no, it's a continuation of him as an adult and how fucked up he is. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, how messed up he is from uh, all that stuff that happened to him and no one believes him. It's like it's like Return to Oz, but the adult... Oh, because that did really well. <laughs> oh, well, well, It did great for Feruza Balk's career, that's, that's for cult, sure. That's well, a cult classic, sir. <laughs> success, financial success isn't a barometer of quality. Uh, fair. Vel- Velveeta's the best he's, cheese he's in America. Me his pi- uh, Mark's giving me his pitch for his movie. Tell me more about yours. What's and whoever, uh, Go well, ahead, Samurai Steve. Jack never got to properly end, really, in the cartoon iteration. I mean, I know there's a comic out now. I don't know how much of that is actually canon or how much of the people involved actually are involved but um we we kind of like ended on a cliffhanger we never really got to see how that series would end so we'll give it kind of like this proper goodbye i feel like if we did this big awesome you know throw tarantino in the director's oh. chair i know he's never done any franchise stuff before but he like, loves his samurai though oh, but no. he loves his samurai the groans surrounding you are very loud there is, yeah. there is absolutely no need for the quentin tarantino version of samurai jack because we all know exactly what it looks like already yeah, it's it's a cartoon. Kill Bill. but i mean like throw in just mystical Uma creatures and like who i mean we've never seen tarantino deal with like fantasy kind you, of elements, you want to really. see the Samurai Jack movie 47 Ronin <laughs> well, there you go yeah seriously know. I feel like that's been done like we've seen a, like a no samurai not a time traveling samurai with cool big creatures and monsters and freaking future and past and isn't like, it also in the works aren't they isn't Sam Jackson working on like a, I thought he was I thought that was like a thing that's been like in development hell for a while I feel like that's coming like, tell me coming? about Captain Planet What's Captain your... Planet though I mean come on like how great would it be about a bunch of ragtag teens one who has autism and a bunch of like you. That's hot. That's hot. That's right. else. Yeah, Which one has us? Mati. He's a special uh, kid. He was in a special class. Really? You're hold a special on. kid. I am a I, special hold kid. Hold on. I smell Oscars. Right. Tell me about it. Right. Can't it's you just ju- see? It's just him. Can oh, it see? is the turds. <laughs> 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 tried. 
I think that it's great. You've got your diversity, so you're going to get everyone who's involved. You're not going to have a whitewashed cast like Jem is going to be. You're going to have this awesome diversity. Everyone comes together, and then you just add star power with Captain Planet. You get someone awesome to be Captain Planet. I like that. Are you, are you, are you Brian your Williams? Argument. You're so liberal. No, you know what's going what's on over here? No. There's no global warming. I'm thinking about the fans. You see all oh, these. You see, oh, okay, yeah. There's there's tons of Captain Planet. Fans absolutely, out there. there the are. The only absolutely. way I would see a Captain Planet movie is if the guy that directed Birdemic did it, and they had like the, James like, Wynn? Yeah, because I just want to see how crappy and bad it would be. I mean, look. He's I got a silver no mullet. And also, I just feel it's like. It's green, sir. Oh, it's green. Oh, sorry. And Thank did you. people really actually like Captain Planet? Or was it I just did. one of those things where it was on and no, you were a I kid and you turned your brain okay, off? Okay, here's the thing. You don't went. even have to do Captain Planet. Each of these kids has a power ring that controls elements. Like, how cool is that alone? You t- two-thirds of the movie is that. Was that like that? Avatar? So you, just, so you just sold a gritty remake of Captain Planet, but it doesn't need to have Captain Planet in he's it. He's in it. He's Good constantly... Boy. Oh, no, he's in it. I think he's definitely in it. He's definitely going to be the MacGuffin at the end of the film. Everyone gets him. He comes together. They find out that all their powers combine. That's no, great. I think Captain Planet lived and died in its era. That's the oh. end of Captain Planet. Like I, I don't it see lived it and died back. in the first episode. It did live and die. My guys. first commercial. No break. one's talking about the the majesty of Captain Planet these days. Well, people talk about the majesty of Samurai Jack. Are anybody? Oh, yes. Oh, is it? Yeah, exactly. I was just gonna say, is anybody talking about any of them? To be honest, that I mean, I feel like they're all probably similarly. I feel talked like a bunch about of stoners now. are talking about Neverending Story. What I so why uh, pitch me again one more time? Why your franchise deserves the gritty net, the gritty reboot, and start over, or whatever. And then again, why it's better. Than the other two closing sort of arguments. Uh, I, th- I think of these three, Neverending Story lends itself most to a continuation, a, a grittiness where you can just follow this kid who had this incredible life when he was a, a, a young a adolescent and follow it now and see what that does to people when you're hanging out with all these fantasy creatures as an adult. I think you could do something. It would be crazy. It would be like the Birdman version of a Neverending Story. But I think if you're going to do something, just go balls to the wall and go crazy with it. I feel like if you're going popularity, you're going for people that actually know the franchise you're talking about, or at least the series you're talking about. You mentioned Never Ending Story to kids these days. They're going to be like, what the hell are you talking about? Sounds boring. You mentioned Samurai Jack. There's going to be at least some kids that remember. You show them the character, they're going to know the character. I feel like you've got the familiarity there. You've also got something that has been out in the past 20 years, unfortunately. I mean, look, I'm a huge Never Ending Story Never fan. Never Ending Story hard. is a best-selling classic novel. Look, it's hard for me to fight against Never Ending Story because I love it so much, but that sequel was dog trash. <laughs> that movie was a big old flaming poop. It was that bad. I'll agree with. Two sequels. Jonathan yeah. Brandis. Oh, yeah, and the third one had Jack Black in it, but it was real bad. It was like, yeah. they, they, I mean, Never Ending Story. And then they had a crappy cartoon. You guys mm-hmm. remember that? Yep. It's garbage. I feel like Neverending Story is dead. It, the story has ended. Samurai Jack, it was already pretty violent and gutsy for a kid's show. Uh, Gendy Tartakovsky, style, heavily stylized stuff going on in that show. Very outside of the box, non-kid stuff going on in that show, which super lends itself to a live-action iteration. I feel like, man, you show that post-apocalyptic kind of like future world where the samurai comes in and he's slicing up cockroach robots and stuff and then the next thing he's in feudal Japan I mean the series could continue on forever it's time travel it's samurais it's It's robots good It's it's good Matt your closing argument Here's why both of you are wrong. Never ending story. I feel like we've seen dark animals and creatures and stuff. We've seen uh, Dark Crystal. We've seen Labyrinth. We've seen that a million times. We've seen Samurai. Sure, you put them in time traveling, whatever. It doesn't matter. We've never seen a group of ragtag teens coming together, all with powers, all with the ability to summon this awesome super powered being. I think there's a reason for that. There, <laughs> no, there's no reason. I think that there's a great story to be told there. Can, Whoop, can Whoopi Goldberg remain the voice of Gaia? She absolutely can. <laughs> Damn, you're hey, the baby. Uh, yeah, I just I just look researching. Gendy Tar- Tartakovsky has said as recently as 2012 that he he's working on a Samurai Jack Ooh. movie. That it's going to be 2D animation. Uh, it's at the top of his list, he says, and oh it's still my. it's still it's still qualified as being in development. But it's definitely a project that's been talked about and that he wants to do as an animated conclusion to the Samurai Jack series by Gendy Tartikoff. Scary. Uh, I remember years ago, Brett Ratner optioned it. For oh, no. no. Oh, that's God. not what we're talking about. So, All right. I'm making a call. I think, Steve, man, you really did some amazing work there at the end. I, I like what you said. And you you're really called him out because while I was leaning, I, I want to see the memory story. You reminded us all that it really did continue in terrible, awful ways. Uh, so Steve gets the point. Boom. Oh, Take that point. I'm going to make my Captain America movie. It's going to be awesome. Captain, Captain Planet. Planet. You don't even what know what I Where am I? Oh, round man. Three. The fight's over. <laughs> Getting dizzy. Time for round three. <laughs> all right. 
Focus, starring Will Smith, opens this weekend, and uh, we're all excited. Are we all excited <laughs> for that movie? Is that movie getting good on Rotten Tomatoes? I'm excited for Margot Robbie. Check. Is it going to be good? I, don't, I do like Margot okay. Robbie. I like a good con man movie. Uh, but anyway, we're not talking about that. Simon Hills on Twitter asked us. Focus What's, is at 57%. Oh, on, uh, whoops. Better than a failing grade, I guess. Uh, uh, so is Simon it, Hills on Twitter asked, yeah, what great. is the best film starring Will Smith? A lot of films to choose oh, from. Man. You can go dramatic. You can go blockbuster. Let's see what you guys all pick. And we're starting with you this time, Mark. My pick is one that probably very few people who watch this show saw. It's called Six Degrees of Separation. Oh, it's based it. on a an award win, Pulitzer Prize winning play uh, about the true. St- it's inspired by the true story of a guy, this young guy, uh, a hustler played by Will Smith, who weasels his way into New York Upper East Side society by pretending to be the son of Sidney Poitier. And it's uh, the, the the man in real life was gay, and Will Smith is playing this, this gay character, and it's a great performance. There's none of that getting jiggy with it. Will Smith trademark branded How bullshit. Dare you. How dare you <laughs> tread <laughs> lightly, sir? It's actually a performance. Millennium forever. And unlike his unlike his performances <laughs> in like The Pursuit of Happiness or Ali, he was still young here and wasn't jaded, so he wasn't trying to suck Oscar's dick. <laughs> Sorry. Beep. Uh, but, 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 but it's like... Uh, De La Hoya? The gold one. Oh, no, well, if, if you give him enough blow, I hear you can do that. That was an uh, Ali, I believe. Uh, but uh, I'm going to get a hit by the... Like, the <laughs> Um, but, uh, we are alive. I want to remind you, I can't cut any of this, Mark. <laughs> it's all parody. Uh, it's all fa- fair use. Fair fan use. Film. We're doing fair a fan use. film. All right, well, we'll come back. We got, I got your, I got your, your pick. Well, uh, Matt, what's your pick? Uh, my pick is uh, I'm going to get jiggy with it because it's Men in Black. I feel like Men in Black was a fantastic film. I feel like it took Will Smith to a, a completely new level. It took him out of the Fresh Prince DJ dancing stuff. He did do a song in it, and he did do a couple more, but it launched a franchise. It got kids involved. It was just a, a really great movie. Movie. Danny Elfman's score, like everything about that film was fantastic. And it's great. I, I love that movie. Mm. Steve. Uh, well, even though I love Men in Black, I have to say the best Will Smith, uh, Will Smith movie, uh, hands down, Independence Day. Yeah. I mean, it all went downhill from there. I'm not even joking. It's just all bad trash. Until, I mean, look, Men in Black was great. Good I thing my it. movie came before Independence Day. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, look, Independence Day, sh- it skyrocketed his stardom. I mean, he was the Fresh Prince. He was known as the Fresh Prince, and he was known as uh, that rapsman uh, before that. And I feel like Rapist. Independence Day, the rapist, yeah. sorry, mm-hmm. pronunciations aside. And then I feel like uh, Independence Day just skyrocketed his career. I mean, the movie is sci-fi. It, it appeals to all of our sensibilities. Even moms love that movie. I mean, come on. It's just universally loved. I don't know anybody that doesn't like it. Do moms like your other two movies? <laughs> they love Men in Black. Are you kidding me? Moms think it's gross. What? How many moms do you know? Have sir? you guys seen Six I know Degrees three of Separation? Moms at least I, a long time ago. I, I've, I've never seen it, so I, it's hard. For, it's going to be hard for me to fight that. There's one. no aliens in it. What? They're really? I Ugh. remember there being aliens. It's, and it's got a great cast. It's got Stockard Channing in it. It's just it, the whole. It's, uh, Ugh, it's sounds like a snooze fest. <laughs> yeah, it's <a> well, <laughs> it's well acted and well written and no oh, special it sounds effects. Like crap. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! What did the Academy say about it? <laughs> Hey, what did the Academy say about it? Oh, uh, hang on. I, I, I don't it was think they nominated. Said much. It was nominated for best for adapted screenplay. Best, uh, best actress. Mm. Will Smith. Dr. Will Smith was nominated so for best <laughs> actress. <laughs> yeah. So let's, uh, since we're, we're, I mean, I have seen the film. I know the film. You guys aren't familiar, but let's just talk the two blockbusters head to head ID4 versus Men in Black. Mark, curious as the outsider, which of those two do you think is the best Will Smith movie? I would have to say Men in Black. Ooh. Just because. Independence Day is so stupid. Oh no! Portobello mushrooms get a a, a virus in their computer. <laughs> oh, what? And no. Randy Qua- you don't know, Randy Quaid. Man. We should have we should have put an intervention in that movie Dude, for Randy you, Quaid. Hold on a second. We oh, let's hook your penis up to some electrodes. You listen to that speech. You got, you got to buy me a drink first. You listen to that speech, <laughs> and you don't get half a chub. You are a dead person. You, I mean, you have no soul if you don't get. If half you a get chub. if you get a half a chub to that, you're that autistic character from Captain Planet. Yeah, my team. <laughs> All comes around. Captain Planet <laughs> reference, Matt, guys. What are you saying? What are your thoughts against? I'm going to play the semantics card. I don't think that that film is a is a Will Smith starring vehicle. I think that that film is an ensemble cast. Nowhere is the he question top wasn't villain. Will Smith starring vehicle. Yeah, it was the best, no, film it. best film with Will Smith. Film starring Will Smith. Uh-oh. Starring. All right. Well, I still don't think of that movie as a Will Smith movie. I we think tried to cut Black. the cut the semantic out by making it best film starring Will Smith. Okay, that's fair. I think th- I do think that Men in Black is the best film starring Will Smith. I do think that is the best because you have got so much more happening in Independence Day. There's so much going on. I feel like you've got Bill Pullman, you've got you've got uh, um, 
Jeff Goldblum. You've got so much going on in that movie. Will John Smith Hirsch. Is, John, I mean, look, there's that. I mean, there's literally just one moment in Independence Day that takes the entire Men in Black series and scrunches up into a little ball and throws it behind its back, and it's the Welcome to Earth moment. It's, I mean, I it believe takes, it's pronounced Earth. <laughs> Earth. It's actually not. That's racist, right, Dan? That is correct. That is a, a huge misnomer. He does not say Welcome to Earth. He says very clearly Welcome to Earth. Life, I don't know. My life is a lie. I, I don't think know we should where deduct that, points for that racism. Became a thing, I think but yeah, it's not a thing. <laughs> it's not, it's not, not even ambiguous. Uh, I mean, right. just the the gifs alone on the internet. Mm-hmm. I mean, are, where are the Men in Black gifs? Anybody there seen them? There's so many. Where are the men? Where is someone quote? Where are the quotes for Men in Black? I make this look good. Is that who's doing that? I've got no two points. I have two counterpoints. One, did Independence Day put a song in the top twenty charts for six weeks? Um, nope. And two. Let's look at a franchise that Will Smith was starring so much of that he came back to it more than once. Did he come back to Independence Day 2? No, he dropped out of the project. Well, look, I mean, we, the movie hasn't emerged yet. Men in Black 2 was, a, was a pile of garbage. And do we even remember part 3 Men at Black all? Men in Black 2 had Laura Flynn Boyle in her underwear. I mean, but that, what is yeah, that? Yeah, when she was still wow, human. Really yeah, yeah. Come That's on. That's not a stretch. Dude, Vivica right, first of all, we're not talking about Men in Black 2 right now. We're talking about Men in Black. Yeah, I was going to say, you're getting off the topic. Yeah. Well, hold on. Are we talking about a failed franchise? Because that's Men in Black. That is not uh, a I'm talking failed about franchise. Independence Independence Day. is not a franchise. They've only been one yeah, of them in 30 years. Well, but I mean, I'm not, I was only saying Men in Black is a failed franchise. No, it's not. The third one was a huge hit. It was a huge made like $600 million. I mean, but who remembers Men in Black 3? Do you I do. remember what happened in that movie? I do. They had Lou Ellen from Little Women. They fought aliens and wore sunglasses. <laughs> same old, same old shit. You mean? Anyway, look, Independence Day. I mean, it was a, it was a national moment in American history. It was like. The, it was yeah, it in brought 1776. Back, it was great. <laughs> it brought back movies. It was like the big what? epic tent pole. Like Do you work for Roland Emmerich. <laughs> he, might, he might. Look, it was a spectacle. I get what you're time, saying. At the summer blockbuster, it really paved the way for this film right absolutely. here. Absolutely. Yeah, if it you. wasn't good, for good final Day. argument. I, I get it. I'm, I got your set. And what? So I want to give six degrees some attention here. So it's, yeah. it's just a movie. why is it better than these two obviously very successful Be- popular blockbusters? Because it's dependent on performance and and script. It's Hang on, movie. I'm already bored. Let me go make a sound. Well, that's, you know, let me go shoot some aliens. Uh, uh, I'll get some tinfoil so you can focus on it over here. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's not a traditional choice, especially in this group, but, you know, it's the kind of thing where you, you can watch that movie and there's a lot going on there that is a lot deeper than, oh, I'm going to blow up the White House with mushrooms or I'm going to wear sunglasses. You know, the, the, these these two movies are just are just which wait which one was which? Because I don't. Oh, uh, the Independence Day. <laughs> he mixed them up. Every should be deducted uh, points. Independence Day. Does, they look like portobello mushrooms. I just can't get over. Also, that. they made Randy Quaid crazy. Uh, um, Matt, the closing th- thoughts here. Uh, yeah, Why it, is it better than this? Uh, clear, apparently, you know, in his eyes, the Academy Award nominated real film and a uh, blockbuster that paved the way for years. What's Sure, your a argument? film that, that no one saw or remembered, that's A. And two, it's, it might be a great <laughs> thing that started his career, you could say, but it's not, a fran- it's not a film that started a franchise. Men in Black started a franchise, which makes it a That's great, now dead. But, no, it's not dead. It's not dead. It's so, a trilogy. Uh, so Star starting Wars a franchise is... Is the rule of making things great? Yeah, it's great. Casper had two movies. And Casper was a great film. Oh, my Lord in heaven. Tell me it's a bad movie. I mean, Christina Ricci was pretty... Yeah, right? It had a Ghostbusters reference in it with the Ghostbusters. And it also had Father Guido Sarducci yeah, in it. Yeah, I mean, it. Casper's SCTV. a great movie. Yeah. See, now they want to switch to Ghost... Now they want to switch to... Let's talk about Casper for the rest of the show. <laughs> Good score, too, by the way. Another Bill Pullman right. film, by the way. Uh so to make the call here, I'm gonna go. This is tough. Uh, you all made some good thoughts. I think I think they sort of got you though on the boringness because I don't think anyone remembers the movie. <laughs> the internet so dog. It's a strong movie, but I just think they both have more valid points of like no <clears throat> one cares about that movie, and so it's hard to say that that film is more important than these two huge popular blockbusters that I think were better than most stupid, crappy you know summer blockbusters. So then it really does come down to the battle of the blockbuster, um, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm it's tough here, but I think. I think you're, you, you sort of get me a little bit what? when you say it's a national movement. It's something that does really, even with just one movie, the speech, all those things are just more iconic than the, the stuff in I the... I don't think it's iconic. And I think you got lost in the sequels, which is... Uh, I'll give you a 94. Oh. Boom! Uh, it was a tough one. Semantics, guys. It, it paved the way for it. He said, it, it's, it's, we got we to go with that. Uh, Dan, really quick, as before, uh, yeah. round four. Uh, the, the, the Men in Black sequels have made $1.6 billion Boom. worldwide combined. And let's not forget that there was talk due to the Sony hack. There was talk as soon as later as 
early as last year about doing a Men in Black. Men in Black. With uh, 20, 20, 20, 23, 23 jump. jump Men in Black. So I don't, I don't think it's fair to say, say that the franchise is dead. Men oh, yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't, that's not what I was ago. Because if there's anything Men in Black needs, it's Jonah Hill. No, we I'm weren't not, talking about franchise either. We were talking about the film. So I, I don't think it matters that the sequels have I'm anything to do I'm just correcting Steve's, Steve's correct. statement that the franchise mm-hmm. is dead. Correct. But I don't think that was... One could argue, but that's not what the argument was about. It's fair. Okay, round four. We have a fun random question from Gaza Bale on Twitter. Yeah, Gaza, we read your tweets and we used your tweet. Are you excited? I know you are, because he keeps tweeting me. So please stop calling Use him. one of my fights. <laughs> well, we did, so leave me alone. No, please keep him coming. Uh, Gaza, thank you for this. Best movie tagline. Um, so many to pick from, and we're going to start with you, Matt. And All right. for those, to be clear, taglines are the lines in the poster that sort of sell you in one line what the movie's about and comes to my movie. Matt, what's yours? So my film is uh, a little classic called Die Hard 2. And the original tagline for the film, which was such a popular tagline that even modernly people start referring it to it as the title of the film is Die Harder. That was the tagline for the movie was Die Harder. And it had a ton of other ones. yippee ki all over again. It had some great ones. But I mean, like, there's just it's just such a great way to bring everybody back. Die Hard was such an amazing film. And it was really lightning striking. And even one of the taglines was lightning strikes twice, mm. which sounds like a Back which to the Future tagline. Which it did awful movie. But it did later on. But it's just such, it's uh, d- between Die Harder and Yippie Kaye all over again, those two just sum up the film in its entirety. And a tagline is supposed to get an audience excited, right? Steve, what's, exactly your, yeah, what's your tagline, Steve? Uh, my tagline is from a little classic indie film called Ferris Bueller's Day Off. That was a joke. It's not an indie film. Just, you know. <laughs> and the tagline is something that I will, I mean, I don't know if anybody knew this. I'll Leisure never forget room. it. No, it's one man struggle to take it easy. Which is just the most chill tagline ever. It makes I, me want to like... I'd like to see proof of that tagline, because I remember the poster being saying, Leisure Rules. I mean, the there's tagline. hundreds of taglines on Dan will be verifying. Stuff, I think we already yeah. did. It might have been yeah. one of many. That might be like... The, that's the one you're picking. Okay. That's the one I'm picking. Mark, what's your pick? Mine's from a small, simple, touching film. Six degrees. Called Christ. Alien. Oh, In space, no one can hear you scream. God oh, damn it! God damn it! See, I've just won this one. They just they just acquiesced. Just give him a goddamn uh, point yeah, already. I think, kind of I think we did. It. I mean, we all agreement. Yeah. I, honestly, these I were both so. very fun ones, but I think you guys didn't really. Although think of the most I, iconic. I did have an alt, which was from uh, Naked Gun thirty three and a third, which is OJ did it. Uh, no, it's, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's uh, from the guy from the director's brother. No, oh yeah. man, I messed it up. I don't know what it is anymore. Dan will look it up for I'll you and make it a up. joke. It's like from the director <laughs> whose brother directed Ghost, Ghost yeah. or something. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. That was pretty funny. Um, Mark wins. Yeah. I'm not yeah. going to waste time right. on this one. I won't fight you. Good job, Mark. That's what happens when you're running late. KO. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wow. That was a quick one. Mm-hmm. Thanks, uh, thanks uh, uh, Gaza. Sorry that didn't go longer than you probably wanted. <laughs> and, uh, Keep them coming. With though. the Ferris Bueller question, you're actually both right. The top of the poster says Leisure Rules, and underneath the title it says One Man Struggle to Take It Easy. Well, they're both there. Yeah. 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 All right, round five. The Lazarus Project opens up. I know we all bought our tickets. Mm-hmm. Two uh, of them. Olivia Wilde plays a, someone who dies. I, I don't know anything about it. I just know, saw the trailer. I think she dies. I'm writing Slash Fiction And then Mark right Duplass <laughs> brings it back. Something along those lines. It's got Childish Gambino in it. I mean, yeah. They I, don't, I, who knows? That? I saw That's on The cool. Daily Show. Yeah. She was funny. I don't know. Anyway, I don't know anything of this movie, sadly. But um, it's out coming this weekend. Um, so we thought, since they're bringing someone back from the dead, why don't we do this? Uh, fight number five. If you could bring back one movie star from the dead to be in movies today, They'd come back in their prime, meaning uh, yeah, the best you know best part of them zone when they were acting. Uh, who would you pick? And we're gonna start with you, Steve. Um, this was a no-brainer for me, actually. I, I mean, it was between two, but I think this one felt most natural to me. I would like to bring back Chris Farley in his prime. Dude was not done. Died way too young. Stupid reason. He was ready to do so much more. I mean, and poor David Spade. Look at the guy. He's just done. <laughs> he just lost his best friend and his career at the same time. Oh. Uh, Mark, what's your pick? Uh, this was tough. The, my one of my choices was River Phoenix, but uh, uh, the one that you guys went with is equally was Heath Ledger. After the after the one-two punch of Brokeback Mountain and The Dark Knight, he really completely transformed himself as an actor, and I'm really really pissed. Another stupid reason for his death that we don't get to see. We have Owen Wilson still making movies, but we don't have Heath Ledger anymore. <laughs> Ouch. Oh, I'm not going to dwell on that one. Uh, <laughs> Matt, what's your thoughts? Uh, mine, you know, I really, I love Chris Farley. I love Heath Ledger. Uh, I, I was going to go with Chris Farley, but I thought even more iconic, someone who I feel like was taken way too early. And we didn't even really get to see that much of him as the, the, the landscape changed in film was John Candy. 
Yeah. John Candy was, uh, he was a legend and he did so much great stuff. I mean, Uncle Buck and, and everything to the point where he was so iconic and he was so, uh, he touched everyone around him that they even, Slimer is John Candy in Ghostbusters. Like mm-hmm. he is a reference to John Candy. I've heard Candy. it's also Belushi could be the, the Slimer. I, I, I mean, maybe too. both. Yeah. Uh, maybe a little, little column A, column yeah, B. Yeah. I do know John Candy almost played the Lewis Tully role though. But I think he, there was a problem with the script or something, and he didn't like yeah. the character or something. Yeah, like I mean, I, I, I just uh, John Candy all the way. I think that he, in his prime today, he'd be fantastic, and I think he would be able to take back that like stereotypical fat guy character that that we see today with the Rogans and the Jonah Hills and everyone and then the Josh Gads, and really kind of own it and and have it as opposed to this kind of side, laughy character that it's become. So why do you think the other two should stay dead, guys? <laughs> wow, oh, we're going to get dark. All we're right. making it way dark. I mean, look, um, I love Heath Ledger's performance as the Joker. Um, man, this is going to get real dangerous. Yeah, it really we're gonna, is. We're going to no, really what, tiptoe we, around. We love them all. We all. It's all clear, but we got we to gotta well, make the a thing. decision. Which They're all gone. They're gone. There's no They're bringing them gone. back. We only get so, one. That's a fair way to say it. There's only one Lazarus effect we can <laughs> we can use. I mean, look. So which I, one are we using it on? Can I, I, can I, I use it on my career? <laughs> I have to go with my own heart space here and go very personal with this and just say I come from a place of comedy and I come from a place where I've always been a fat kid and I just saw myself in Chris Farley and I saw him as a positive role model for, you know, kind of like the outcast in cocaine, for the outcast and the underdog and the guys that weren't particularly comfortable in their own skin. And I just feel like, I mean, Tommy Boy, Black Sheep, I mean, you just think, I mean, even his role in Wayne's World 2 as the, like, the security guard. Anything you saw him in, any sketch he was in in Saturday Night Live, he just lit up the room, lit up the world. He's just taken way too early. I just want to, I don't know. It's one of those things where, like, we need another kind of, like, big energetic energetic fat guy to kind of take the world by storm again. Weird fact, remind me, check me if it's true, Dan. He was Shrek, correct? He was Shrek, he was Shrek yeah. And they, were, then they, they recorded it, and then he died before and where they could is do that? it, and they had to change it to That's, Mike Myers. I want to hear correct. that, because we just... They, once they uh, once they started recording, I don't know if you can hear me. Once they started recording it again, they with Mike Myers, they did it all over again because he added the Scottish accent. So they did the Shrek three times. Um, I want to hear the Farley Shrek stuff because yeah. we just barely got to hear the Paul Rubens Roger Rabbit stuff mm-hmm. recently, and I don't know why they just dug that out. Uh, Mark, thoughts on Heath versus well, the other two? Well, I know this is this is an awkward fight to fight, but well, this this Devil's Advocate thing. If I switch to a Devil's Advocate, do I, do I pick one of these two to fight for? No, just yours. Oh. You, you can't really pick it on this round. Because oh. <laughs> then you'd be saying you don't want to bring Heath Ledger back. Well, I do want to bring Heath Ledger back. I was just trying to shake things up because it's getting, you know, to mess things up a little. But, yeah, Heath Ledger, I think I think Heath Ledger could do it all. I think he was really, really charming. You know, you watch, like, Ten Things I Hate About You, and he elevates that movie. And as he was getting older, things like Brokeback Mountain and things like his his cameo in uh, Monsters Ball and, thing, and, of course, The Dark Knight, he would have won. People said, you know, he wouldn't have won that Oscar if he didn't die. He would have won that Oscar if he, if he hadn't died. That's a great performance. You can watch Dark Knight, and every time you see that performance, there's a new color, there's a new layer there, and that was all him bringing it to the screen. I, 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 think he, I think he was so young and so versatile that I think he had a much longer career. I think John Candy was great, but John Candy was... 55 when he But hold on, I see Ledger going into the obscure. I see him blending in with the DiCaprios and the kind of like oh, the no, pens no, no, and no. stuff. Like I don't see him kind of like standing up above and kind of like ruling the actor kind of scene. Show know? me show me a show me a DiCaprio or a Sean Penn performance as fearless as Brokeback Mountain or or Dark Knight. It's true, but I mean I I feel like that's that's his peak. Like I don't know if there was I don't more know if he would have gotten any aside from doing more kind of Nolan movies. I don't know if he would have been yeah, it would have been cool to see more Joker, obviously, yeah, and we sure. would have gotten more Joker. But, but no one obviously loves working with people that he loves, so I, I assume that he probably would have would have. But but, you, but the argument you're using on that is the same. Is uh, what was Chris Farley going to do? Just more Tommy Boy? He was going to do more falling through tables and more I'm fat and sweaty. I mean, again, a more of a positive about, role model for kind of like the fat underdogs out there. There there really isn't one right now, you know? You can got, you, Dan, just to help me here, what projects did they have in development before they died? Is there a way to look uh, that up still? Uh, I will do See my best. Do? Beyond Shrek, I feel like I, I remember know, he but... also had the Fatty Arbuckle movie he was trying to get off the Ooh, ground. Oh, I didn't know about that. But she yeah. was going to do like a serious role. I don't remember what Candy, I just know about Candy Shrek. did have a longer role. And yeah. then Ledger, I did uh, miss the, what's the Imaginarium. And Dr. Parnassus. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm just curious if there's any other insight of what, where would we have gone, just what, what they were working on. Well, he was on he was on the set of Wagons East, uh, John Candy, when yeah, he when he died. passed. So mm-hmm. let me let me see if I can find. I mean, some well, other they, not yeah, to be unfair, but you sort of were saying this. Did, did Candy have an, enough of a run versus these two that it almost feels like the other two? Need well, a, I mean, need a you, better the, get? the question was who would we bring back in his prime to be in film today, and I think it would be John Candy. Here's my argument against these two: is that John Candy died. Uh, he was older. He was not very healthy, but he didn't have a problem. These 
two other actors, they were kind of train wrecks. They both. He didn't have a problem. He was a compulsive overeater. That's why he had a heart attack. That's sure. the same as an addiction to drugs. Uh, but it did. But it, it also he took him away. He was he was a large man. But I feel like today he could have been on American Weight Loss Celebrity, what have you. He would have been okay. And we could have. And our guys could have been on intervention. That's you're not right. A vile but argument. they but they didn't. But they weren't. They yeah, were both and tortured. He, and souls. he didn't go to a spa either. He was a tortured soul. His was just mm. ham instead of snorting. I mean, no, you could definitely say Paul Giamatti. I mean, not Paul Giamatti. Let's uh, just stick to the movies yeah. about why they died. <laughs> He's getting too really heavy. dark, guys. Yeah. I wanted really to, what dark. movie? Tell me what movies we would have gotten. How, what what would we? Let's use that as our closing argument here, just because this is too dramatic. <laughs> but what like what would we have gotten more? You guys were implying it. We got Joker, obviously. But like, tell me what you think the world missed because he's gone. Like, what what would the next of couple pieces have been? Name me Canadian name, Bacon Two. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I'm not going to go the easy sequel. Name me an older, uh, larger actor that, you, that that can play that role and still do that thing. I mean, Dan Aykroyd went nuts, so you can't have Dan Aykroyd. John Goodman. Stuff. John Goodman, yeah, you have one. There's one. You can have John Candy and John Goodman both be those Jim roles. Belushi? No, Jim Belushi? No one talks about Jim. <laughs> we don't speak of Jim Belushi. Jack Nicholson now? But see, Jack that, Black? My, my argument is that... But Jack Black's not even old enough. I feel like John Candy can still kind of take... John Goodman is everywhere because he's there's only one of him. There's only one of that role, that stereotype. So, But that, no, that's my argument for, for Farley. There is no other Farley. There, like, you could you could argue that... that Farley you know, had no range. You, you could argue that John Goodman and uh, and uh, uh, your guy... Candy. Yeah, and, John, and John Candy have this very similar type. No one else can do what Farley did. No one else can fall into a desk and actually make... It funny. Yeah, Melissa McCarthy definitely could never do that. I mean, it wasn't as funny as when Farley did it. I agree, but she could do it. I mean, she could, but I mean, we're talking male kind of driven, like sexist. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's talk about females that need to do a comeback. Have any died? So, any final? Is that your, 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 I'm just giving you. I heard. I mean, honestly, last, I just feel word. like we we've lost the energetic, lovable, fat guy and let's get Kevin James out of there because nobody likes Kevin James but let's just we need the we well you need, said funny so that's true I did so that canceled that out right away we need the energetic funny fat role model back Mark last thoughts I just think that John Candy we have great movies from John Candy he did a lot of great stuff he has a great body of work I think Heath Ledger of the, of these two had the most potential to surprise us and be the kind of person whose work we talk about 30 40 50 years we're still now. doing it we're doing it I feel like if he was back, he, you either to take a line from the movie. So that Matt, I think they disqualified you, and I agree oh, with him. So just to help, who do you whose movies would you rather see more of, Chris Farley or Heath Ledger? I'd probably want to see more of Heath Ledger stuff. As would I. I think you made a good point. Wow. Uh, you, you want it there at the end, Mark? Congrats, Mark yeah. gets the point. Oh, man, snubs. I do want to see more of Chris Farley though, but uh, we're tough. All right, round f- uh, six. As I change my papers here, uh, slow news week this week. Uh, we were going to talk about Blade Runner and things, but we didn't really have anything to argue. We're all sort of like, man, we don't really mm-hmm. care. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're going to go with some more fan requests. It's good, good for you guys. So uh, Gabriel Camilla on Twitter asked us, uh, what's the best movie where the character's name is in the title? This is just a random question, right? Mm. The titular. Um, best movie yeah, where the character's titular. name is in a title. Uh, so we're going to start with you, Mark. My first choice was Dahmer. Kidding. Um, <laughs> but I wanted the, 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 this. This is such a wide open category. There's so many ways you can go with this that I wanted to go with something that I think is a great classic that deserves some attention and uh, is a really great comic book movie. I think The Rocketeer. Mm. I think The Rocketeer is the best Indiana Jones sequel we never got. Mm. Like, Billy we, Campbell's fantastic. Billy Campbell's fantastic. That's a good way you know, of describing it. I've yeah, never it, heard it, it described it, that it way. It captures that feel of Raiders of the Lost Ark, and you've got mm-hmm. that great cartoon with the Nazi propaganda. That's you've got Terry O'Quinn. Mm-hmm. You've got the ties to the real world. You don't. The special effects are great because some of them are stop motion. They're not all CG. It's got a. Then it's you got, got that a creepy co- Nazi cartoon that the they Nazi show cartoon in the middle the of the jet movie. The jetpacks and stuff. Yeah, that's pretty it, You got the, an amazing score. That score is used in every single commercial mm-hmm. and every yeah. single trailer. It's a great score. And it's just a Williams. No, it's James Newton Howard. Oh, okay. Howard. Uh, it's just it's just a really great fun movie. And talking about family films, it's a film you can watch with your grandparents and you can watch with your with your kids because it has something for everyone in it. It's got edge, but it's not edgy for edginess. To Did say. you mention the great Alan Arkin? As mm-hmm. well? Alan Ar- oh, Alan Arkin's fantastic in that. He's you know he's proven that he deserves every Oscar and every nomination he gets. He's just, yeah, and it's sad too. There was a sequel on deck, but then some other movie ended up killing it. Or, don't hurt me. Uh, man. I forget what it was, don't but they were me. close to finally doing. Or, or, no, because the movie went out on the same weekend as something else. Yeah, it killed its. And Disney didn't potential. know how to market it. They didn't. They marketed it as sort of a kids movie where teenagers you know you get teenagers to see it and they really liked it but mm-hmm. the marketing was just so you know and a bit of trivia Disney apparently had made two or three of those bulldog cafes for the theme parks 
but the movie didn't do well, so wow. they never used it. Was it was on I'm the like, tour for a while. I want one of those in my backyard. Yeah, right. Wow. I went to the 20th anniversary of it at the uh, at the El Capitan. I think it's a yeah, great it's movie. Yeah, it's super underrated movie. If you haven't seen it, check out The Rocketeer. Yeah. Good ch- choice. Real. Dan, if, I, if you can look that up, there was a movie came out against it. Sort uh, of yeah. is why it got crippled at the box office and never got its. Was due. it Dick it, Tracy? Okay, maybe? it, it, it opened was the year before. It opened number four behind Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Oh, that's what did it. City Slickers. And dying young. Damn you, Prince of like Thieves. There was something else around, but yeah, maybe it just didn't get. A, I remember reading that. I'll Matt, try to find the exact release. Uh, weekend. Matt, what's your pick? Uh, my pick is a movie that actually has the the main character. It's his his name. It's Hellboy. Hellboy. It's his mm. name. Mm. Uh, I mean that it's it's a great film. It's Guillermo del Toro just kind of getting to have fun. Both of those movies are great, and both of them have Hellboy in the title. Um, I think Hellboy is a fantastic film. I think it's dark. I think it's fun. I think it's for everybody. Uh, Ron Perlman getting to do his thing, and, and and just the prosthetics of that film, everything about it is just amazing. And it, it spawned an even better sequel. Uh, but Hellboy, Hellboy is my pick. Steve, what's your pick? My pick would have to go for another classic Touchstone Disney kind of movie. Wasn't Rocketeer Touchstone? They, yep. they put it under their darker mm-hmm. banner. Yeah. Close uh, enough. Roger Rabbit. Who oh. framed Roger Rabbit? Uh, I mean, it could be argued that Roger Rabbit wasn't the main character, but I mean, we definitely, you know, have Roger Rabbit as the focal point of the entire film, as who framed him. Mm, it was clearly the uh, taxi. It was always. I mean, was right, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah, Benny the Cab. Uh-huh. Uh, but I mean, look, I, it definitely like uh, a a like a like a point in history for film for animation. We'll never see anything like that ever again, where the Warner Brothers and Disney characters are combined, and and you know, Bugs Bunny and Mickey Mouse got equal mm-hmm. screen time in that film. Great movie, great title. Uh, rest in peace, Bob Hoskins. And Baby uh, Herman finger bangs the nurse. Right? Yeah, yeah, just mm-hmm. real quick, right? Yeah. And then you can mm-hmm. see a little uh, little vagina action from Jessica in mm-hmm. the yeah. Laserdisc version. Mm-hmm. That's really? true. Yeah, yeah, you slow it down when she spins out of the... Ca- I, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah, why would you? <laughs> it's on your phone. Uh, yeah, actually, yeah. let's show you that. Quick. Also, I think famously Michael Eisner's phone number was written on... Uh, it was either Michael <laughs> Eisner or someone's phone number was written in the, on the bathroom wall in, the, in the Toontown. It had to be either Eisner or Katzenberg. Yeah, something yeah, like that. Yeah. Uh, tell me, yeah. So, what do you guys think? Why, why do you? It, now we got three good contenders: Hellboy, Roger, and uh, uh, Rocketeer. Well, I think of the, I think of the three. Not to pile on Matt, I think Hellboy's the weakest movie of the three. Um, it's got a lot to admire in it, but I don't know anyone except you who said, "Hey, let's rewatch Hellboy." Not me. I've never every night. I've ne- and, and I and I love Mike Mignola. I love the source material. I love Guillermo del Toro. I just don't think that movie works very well. I just uh, think it's like a a, a a Jello that hasn't set yet. It's just. It's almost a good movie, so I, I I would have to you know argue against you on that one. Roger Rabbit, it's close. It's kind of like you know I'm I'm cheating on my wife with Roger Rabbit because I do think Roger Rabbit is a great movie and I think it's groundbreaking and I think it's one of Zemeckis' best after Back to the Future, but I do think that The Rocketeer is a kind of timelessness to it that 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 crosses that crosses. You can watch it with anybody can watch it and enjoy it. Whereas this Roger Rabbit is a lot. A lot of people get manic in that movie. I mean, Disney had problems with Roger Rabbit because Fleischer's voice, because the, the character was just so grating that people, there wasn't a lot of Roger Rabbit successful merchandise because that voice tested horribly with people. And what then, are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. and, wasn't, and wasn't Roger Rabbit the Zodiac Killer, too? He was. He was. So that, that, that should instantly disqualify. I mean, I, okay, so amongst the three, I would have to say, although I'm a huge Hellboy fan, I really do feel like Hellboy is the weakest battle here. I don't know why. I, I Honestly, I, I have to say it's because... Ganging up again. So I honestly much. think If it's, you picked Hellboy 2 as the movie with the character in the title, I might be a little bit more generous, but Hellboy 1 is not a great movie. Well, I don't know really what we're battling for here. If we're battling for, like, the better movie of the three right now, then... I don't know. That's really tough because personally, I love The Rocketeer. I think it's right up there. It's very close on my list. Uh, where, well, they're both where in the Roger 40s. Rabbit Let's is. have them team up. I know, right? Maybe. I mean, one of them isn't one of them kind of like taken from Chinatown or the sequel to Chinatown. They like took yeah. the script and reworked it. Into yeah, that's Roger, Roger Rabbit. Rabbit. Yeah, the, the the freeway. Yeah. So I mean, look. I, I and so if we took Hellboy out of the fight and we're going based on popularity alone, unfortunately, Rocketeer it doesn't have much of a battle here because. I mean, you go to a kid and you ask them again. I mean, Roger Rabbit still walks the parks sometimes. Uh, I, I don't know if you ask a kid who Roger Rabbit is today. That they know who Roger Rabbit is. I mean, Rabbit I feel is. like there would be more of a chance for them to know the more character. More of a chance, possibly too. Over maybe, the Rocketeer. Yeah, okay. I mean, I think there there is a tiny Rocketeer in Disneyland that's moving the little popcorn cart. That's like what he's doing now. But but there is, is there a, really? Yeah, but there is a full bodied Roger a Rabbit. Tiny. Ro- what does that mean? A yeah, little so, person so, Rocketeer? No, no, no. There's these popcorn machines all around Disneyland, and they have these little like kind of like circus monkey things. 
things that kind of like turn the popcorn curl. There was also a Roger Rabbit ride for quite and a long there time. There was actually a Toontown. 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 Actually, there, there currently is still a Roger Rabbit ride. I think it's ride. Taking shut down, down actually. Yeah, Roger Rabbit's frozen. cartoon spin. Oh, it hasn't damn, been you there frozen. Far. So I would think kids would probably, there's sadly, as there should be, there's no Rocketeer no. stuff in Disneyland. No. Right. I mean, and if you're talking about like, you know, good, I mean, good films of the three, I mean, Roger Rabbit has everything. It has something for kids, something for adults. It's very dark in tone. You've got very much kind of like this governmental sort of like uh, little guy versus the big corporation story going on, which is always fun for kids. And then you've got like, again, if you're a cartoon lover in any way, it has everybody. And I mean, and it, almost everybody. And I mean, just the songs and just the, the score, Sylvester. Sing, sing one of those songs for us. Smile, darn you, smile. Wow. You know, <laughs> Wait, they're going to have to pay for that. They're going to have to pay for that. They're going to have to pay for that. Disney owns that. Disney owns that. All right. I mean, I, I feel like I'm getting close, but I don't want to completely rule you out, uh, uh, Hellboy. They're, they kind of did. But give me one last closing there to why that's there, if that's unjustified. The Rocketeer is not the character's name, first of all. That is his. That is his that Hellboy's is his, not his name. Yes, either. it is. That's not his demon name. His name Ooh, is Hellboy. Everybody, his name is Hellboy. It's not his. It's not snap. John Hellman. That's the, true. What the, is his name? The Rock um, Who? The Rocketeer. That's his fucking name. No. Wait, name. hold on. Hellboy's name is something. It's Hellboy. Different. No, no, no. It is a different name. It's like. Dan? Uh, I almost want to say Raz Al Ghul, but it's not no, that. It's very not. similar to that, though. It's not that. We're checking. We're checking. But I uh, finish your final closing. Who framed Roger Rabbit? My argument is I don't think he's the main character. I think Eddie Valiant is the main character. I don't know question. if it was argued if it was the main character. But I the think but don't I don't, lost in them. It's no. semantic. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that Hellboy is a fantastic film. Just, your films just are great. Embrace, but the, think, embrace the darkness, sink in the water. No, no, yeah. I think that Hellboy is a great movie. Stop fighting. Stop but fighting. Just slowly let go of that right hand of doom and make it a thumb into the lava. Do like, we have the names, like, Dan? Yeah. Uh, Hellboy's name is Anung Un Rama. There it is. Uh, that's the that's the, the foreign title. And I don't think it's fair to say that I mean Superman's name isn't really Superman, okay. but he's a title character. We talked about this yesterday, and that's where we landed on the Rocketeer, is that he's referred to in the movie as, long as, as the Rocketeer. As he's referred to in the movie as the name. Someone here had Jaws. Oh, my I original name was Jaws. They don't call him Jaws. Oh, oh they sure don't. <laughs> mm, such a so great So we did thing. deem these were fair I almost choices. chose Marty McFly's Back to the Future. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, last words? I, th just, I don't think there's any words to give. I think mine is the best movie of the three. I think Steve gave the best argument, though. Steve gets the point. You, yes. You did it at the end. You, you so had a really a, strong there point in your final point. It's a three-way tie now, right? No, uh, I'm no. way in the lead. Steve is winning. The scores, uh, we'll get a scoreboard eventually. But right now, for everyone to update, it's three for Steve, two for Mark, and one for Matt. So, Matt, if you don't win this round, I'm just gonna you're go out. I'm just gonna go <laughs> um, so, if you get this, and if you do, it's a tiebreaker for Mark. And so, we're going to do this quick because I, I want to try and get oh, us in on man. time. Oh, man. Uh, to tie into this week's Honest Trailer, uh, which is a... Oh, sorry. Thank you. Round seven. <laughs> to tie into this next week, Honest Trailer, which is a franchise that's led by a strong woman uh, and has a really dumb song that they sing something like this. I think that's, that's like it exactly. Like it's right? like it sounds something is like that. Is that Fifty no. Shades of Grey? I forget what it is. It's a really boring <laughs> song, and it has a heroine, and uh, it's yeah. part of a franchise. You guys can figure right, out what it is. Uh, but we thought uh, Indiana... I, I can't figure it out. It's completely over my head. Oh, really? Good. Yeah. So it's, it's teasing then. Uh, Indiana <laughs> McFly Jones on Twitter asked us... It's a good name. Um... Best movie heroine. You really best movie heroine in a franchise in a movie right now. You can't think of what that Requiem is. Requiem for a Dream. They just shoot because it. There's really only so one really strong franchise with a female heroine that the fans are flocking. My to. question but was anyway. best movie heroine, not best movie heroine in a franchise. No, no, I was just the tie into the. If you guys <laughs> like figure out what I was talking the drug about. is what you're talking what about. What is the best movie heroine, Matt? We're starting with you. Uh, I'm gonna go with, and I know we knocked him earlier in the show, but I'm gonna go with uh, Tarantino's The Bride from the Kill Bill movies. Oh. I think that she is fan bless you. I think that she is fantastic. I think that you literally see her go from having everything to losing it all and, and just crawling her way back to revenge. I think it's a great revenge story. Sure, he might have ripped off a lot of different movies. For no. It's, <laughs> but it's kind of given. Tell. It's kind of given. Uh, but I think that I think that we have the bride. I think the bride is a fantastic character. I think that she shows everything. She shows comedy. She's on the table. She shows uh, just emotion. She kicks ass, which is great. As much as one might, you know, hate Uma Thurman as a person, she is a fantastic actress. Why would you and hate think, Uma Thurman as a person? Yeah. And I just love. Uh, <laughs> I, I love those films. I you think just Jewish really grandmothered that yeah. line. Yeah. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I have some crep lock. <laughs> but yeah, The Bride all the way. I think that she's great. I think that she's fantastic in those films. She kicks ass and she's a true heroine. I think she's not, she's so much of a true heroine that she doesn't even need to be in the title of the film. Mm. Okay. 
Uh, Steve, what's your pick? Um, I mean, come on. Ellen Ripley from the Alien franchise. Best movie heroine of all time. I mean, she's the get away from her, you bitch line. She's the flame. I mean, fearless, strong. In a, in a crew that's predominantly male, she kicks the alien's ass on her own. She keeps it together. She never has her, oh, God, freak out moment like the other girl in the ship does when the chestburster comes out of cane. I mean, just... You want a strong female role model, you always think of Ripley, especially when you go to the movies. I mean, obviously, we're talking about historical females. we got to go somewhere else. But Mark, what's your pick? Uh, the Michelle Yeoh character from Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. I'm not going to try and mangle her name here, but uh, it, it's, it, it's just <laughs> seeing, you know, that, that shows that how foreign movies were so far ahead of American movies and their portrayal of women. She was a woman. She was in her 40s, but she was still sexy and still deep and could still kick Ass. You, you watch those scenes with Michelle Yeoh, and they, they're just as good as anything that Angelina Jolie's ever done or any of the Divergent stuff or any of these big fight scenes or make Scarlett Johansson disappear from the Avengers. It's just a great perform. It's a great, per- it's a great performance and a great genre role as well, and there's, a lot, there's just so much texture there that, you know, that final scene with Chow Yun-Fat when she comes back, and spoiler alert, 20 years later, when she, you know, she comes back with the cure for him and he's already gone. It's just so heartbreaking. There's just so much. There's excitement. There's emotion. She's a powerful figure who isn't defined by the men around her. I just think it's a great performance. Mm. Andy, I'll try to make Michelle Yeoh's character name. Go for coaching. it. Yu Shu Lian. Okay. Good. Bless you. I, I, hopefully that's right. <laughs> I'll take two. Mm. Uh, so why? Yeah. Why, which which of these fight? In, if you threw these these ladies in a in a rumble, who's gonna win? Ooh. Wow. I didn't even think of that. Beatrix Kiddo, all the way. I, oh, she no. was trained by some of the most deadly assassins in the world, one of which, uh, I mean, was Kane from Kung Fu. I mean, come on. Yeah, like, who hung himself drinking All off. right, we're not going that <laughs> far. <laughs> Too soon. Yeah. Listen, if we're going based on their opponents and how they've stood up against them in any way, I mean, the xenomorphs are debatably the most like just the most invincible monsters on in any galaxy. It's hard to beat them, hard to fight them. Yes, but Minus Ellen Ripley's super tough, but in a fight between the three of these women, I think Ellen Ripley's the weakest because yes. if she doesn't have any of her tech, if you give Ellen Ripley a sword, she's done. She's I don't know. In the first uh, Alien, she didn't have anything. She had like I just ben- watched it last night. She had a flamethrower. Mm-hmm. I mean, but she look. Had, uh, but she had the the control panel. She, she had the, short hair. She did have short hair and nice nice underwear. Sure. Yeah. Pubic, she did. pubic lump. I mean, she found. I mean, she's very resilient. I mean, if we were, if she was in the ring, it, I mean, I don't know. If she was in the ring, it'd be a little difficult. But take away the swords of your respective characters. Take away the swords. Well. Okay. I still think take the bride wins. Take away the swords. Michelle Yeoh still wins. She no was way. trained by ancient Chinese magic. So yeah, she's gonna. No way. I man. don't know. Is her magic qualifiable in this? I don't sense? think so. I don't think. Well, so. her training. No. Is, the, yeah, I, Michelle Yeoh. She's, no way, man. I don't know. The I original mean, running up the tree? No, the bride. She could run up the tree all she wants. She gets a five-finger death punch to the chest. You're done. I mean, come on. She killed her way to the all top right, of an assassin All right, how about this? I'm going to sweeten the pot here. Let's bring Ripley from Alien Resurrection in the mix. She's got alien blood in her, and she's got like half alien, half human things going on. They, these girls are gone. You mentioned you cited Alien first, not a sequel. So we gotta, Well, that's we gotta, true. But, you, I mean, you, if we're talking about the franchise, we're talking about the character, yeah, you, the which, canon. You didn't mention which Kill Bill. He just said the bride. We're just talking Wasn't general just elements. one long movie? <laughs> yeah. Yes. I don't know. I mean, look. I, I, Ripley if, said if, many incarnations. That's fair to. I, I, I mean, and I don't know if we're really going to base this off of who would win in a fight together, or or. We shouldn't. Make, that was just one point. Go okay, ahead. Okay. So me a let's new say point. iconic. Let's say uh, you know, as far as strong female characters go. I don't know if you're going to see your crouching tiger character on that list. I don't know. I I personally don't know. I mean, Ripley. Definitely, debatably number one every time. I, I, I mean, so. next to Alea, maybe I don't know, but but I mean, Sarah I Connor, so. who nobody picked. I'd say a Sarah Connor, probably high three. Sarah up there. Connor was close on my list, but she's just so unpleasant in that second movie. She's yeah. just such a dour, angry woman that it's like it's a great performance, but I don't want to. I want to spend time with her. I mean, I would say in your top five, you could get a Beatrix Kiddo in there, but I just don't know if you're seeing if I don't know if you're seeing her break top three. She overcame. Yeah, you, how all how of the are yours? Yeah, let's get to this for your closing. How are your two more iconic? Is a fair argument. Uh, to Ripley. Okay, the reason why the heroine is important is because you want her to be a role model, right? There's all this talk about the the the, the men are taking over Hollywood, and you really want these strong female characters that don't get any stronger than a two film revenge story about someone coming back from basically the dead and exacting revenge on everyone that wronged her with her child. I mean, it's it's. But it's, wasn't it Jesus who said, "Turn the other cheek"? <laughs> And then, he ran up, and then he ran up the tree. Everybody? Revenge is not a role model thing. I mean, it could be argued Ripley's main kind of uh, 
movement in the films are, are are kind of like her daughter, the Newt figure. You know, the, she's kind of going for the girl. She she's sees just the girl. Killing she all instantly these aliens. connects to the child. We don't really know what the xenomorphs want. They could be friendly. She just wants to wipe them all out. I mean, they're very dangerous, and they definitely sure. bur- they definitely burst through their friend, her sure. friend. Sure, sure. So, so that, there's your revenge, also. <laughs> so, all right, you got your last piece in there, Mark. Why is your if, the iconic debate? It's a little bit you're up against the wall there because I think it's fair to well, say. Well, yeah, we, th- these are these are far more iconic in the in, because of the popularity of the movies, but. But I think that you know, as far as just basis of characters, I think that Rip, I think that uh, Michelle Yeoh's character is a you're right. Ripley is, is the a company <laughs> has the best of both the, the the bride has the fighting skill and the prowess of the bride, and has the maternal sort of Earth Mother thing. I think it's I think if you brundle fly these two together, you would get <laughs> Michelle Yeoh. And I think that just because that you know, and just because that movie that's has racist, spawned 16, yeah. fr- 16 French. Well, one more is coming. On Netflix, well, that's right? that's just a. Prequel? Weinstein directed video thing, Something. so I don't know. If I'm Crouching well, and we got some more badass class. Ripley coming up too in Blomkamp's adaptation. Yeah, because well. after Elysium and Chappie, I can't wait to see what he does. How dare next. you? Have you seen Chappie? You saw yeah, Chappie? If, if his movies went in reverse, he'd be a great director. Oh my oh. God. All right, so we got this is a really hard argument. I think it, it uh, I mean, based on the arguments, and I think you sort of won it with the iconicness, and I think you even just helped him win it there at the end by knocking out the bride. We got to go with Ripley. Steve Bones. gets a point. <laughs> A tough one. You were close. If more people had known her, if you could even have said her name, I'm I just, just, I just didn't want to That's offend true. anybody. You say her name. Yeah. That's All right. Wow. So Matt, I'm sorry, you're out. You can sit oh, here, please. Matt. Stay, stick around. But we're going to our speed round. Uh, it's this is a tough one, Mark. Oh. You gotta you gotta get these pretty quickly, um, or Steve's gonna take it. Right now we have it's four to two. Is that correct, Dan? That's correct. Four to Did two. We? I keep knocking over Spock. I don't want to do that. I didn't know there was no a speed round. Disrespect. I didn't know so either. The oh, way the speed round works. Um, would you just help make? To- oh, he's, he's this up. is my job now. Yeah, it's a hold-up spot. I'm in, demoted. In respect. Cool. I don't want him to be on his. He's on face. my water bottle. Um, um, no, so tiebreaker. The way. Uh, um, sorry. Speed <coughs> round. The way this works is there will be one quick question. I'm going to s- throw at both of you. You have to answer quickly. Now, if you both say the same answer, whoever said it first wins. Wow. Does that makes sense. So this is, just, this is just a one answer, no talking. One it's answer. Just, okay. If you say and you had to say it quick. If you say it quick and you say it first, you win. <laughs> If you say don't Snip. say it quick, you yeah. can say something else, and then you'll get one quick moment to defend your answer. And okay. I'm gonna—it's really about the quick argument, and I gotta do instinctual. But no uh, argument. We just say the. What we if think. you pick something else, if you both say something else, then you get a quick moment to defend, and we move on. Okay. Are the all rules right. clear? I want to make sure everyone yes. understands. Yes, it's all about again. Swiftness. I don't want to, to pull a Hal Rudnick like we did last year, last week. If you both say the same answer at the same time, we will determine who said it first, and that person wow. wins. Wow. All right. We, everyone clear? Yes. Great, let's begin right. the speed round. I'm nervous. You nervous? I like that. Wow, new music. That's good. Sounds like when uh, Traveling Matt in Fraggle Rock goes through his like, <laughs> I think it sounds, sounds like Traveling a Traveling Matt, here we go. Tea party. <laughs> Two movies are playing on cable. Which of these do we watch? X Men The Last Stand or Spider Man 3? X Men The Last Stand. Spider Man 3. Why X-Men? Because at least there's something good in X-Men The Last Stand. There's no jazz clubs or bad hair or toe for grace. I mean, it's a terrible movie, but Spider-Man 3, you can laugh with your friends and laugh at how bad toe for grace's venom is in this stupid emo spidey dance moment. What, what's the good thing? The good thing about X-Men The Last Stand? You've got... You've got... Uh, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> you got... Uh, oh, shit. That tripped up on Ian McKellen's name. <laughs> Homophobes. <laughs> so wait, or is it over? How many points? No, no, he's still got one to, more shot, right? Five to two. There's four questions left. You got to so win all four? If, Mar- if Mark ran the table and got all four of these right, he'd win. Uh, it's not okay. But, uh, you know, it's tough. Ready. Number two. Best voice, por- <laughs> Sorry. Best voice performance in a Disney movie. Robin Williams. Oh, Robin Williams. Yeah, absolutely. Mark wins. You, and you got it, for sure. Jesus. It's not over yet. Oh, <laughs> Number three. Like Seattle Seahawks. Number three. Best spoof movie. Naked Gun. Wet Hot American Summer. Oh man. I mean, no, it, neither it, of you said the right answer, which is no. Airplane. If I mean, I would have said Airplane. I would have been next. Know. But in in the same vein, I would say uh, Naked Gun. You why Naked Gun? I mean, Naked Gun because it started kind of like the popularity of the spoof genre. I mean, you could debate that Airplane did, but if it wasn't for Naked Gun, then I don't think there would be a Wet Hot Why American Wet Hot? Summer. Wet Hot American Summer doesn't have a guy who murdered his wife and Ron Goldman in it. Ooh, damn. Oh, my God. O.J. Simpson. I don't know if that should matter. Yeah, I don't, there's, no, there's, no, there's no murderers in my movie. 
<laughs> Andy, keep in mind, how, this is this is question four, correct? Yes. This is, this is if three. Steve, uh, this is three. If he gets this, I'm done. If Steve wins, if Steve gets this question, that's the game. Oh, I thought you had a fact check for me. Well, that uh, is a fact check. Of, yeah. uh, <laughs> it is a fact. So, <laughs> wow. What was? Can you give me what you said again? Naked Gun. If <laughs> that's it, three if, for a loop. If it weren't for Naked Gun, there wouldn't be a Wet Hot American Summer. If it weren't for Airplane, there'd be no Naked Gun. Uh, Same director. All right, so I gave you a second thought. Is that what you said exactly? And one more final thought from each of you. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, look, Leslie Nielsen, done. D Mike dropped. Mr. Magoo. <laughs> if you're going to pull out Leslie Nielsen. La but, last thought quickly. What, what an American Summer is, takes a, a genre that you didn't think you could parody and parodies it, parodies it brilliantly. It's a smarter movie. Oh, well, this is really objective. And then both of those arguments are strong. Uh, Keep the game going. I, no, that's not what I'm doing here. I'm that's not what I'm doing here. But I do think you made the point of it. Airplane did it, not Naked Gun. So I'm going to give it. Same I don't think you're wrong. Same directors. I'm going to give it Wet Hot because he's a smarter writer, and that's what Mark gets the point. Damn it. Ooh. I would have chose Wet Hot, too. Uh, oh, movie. good. I made the right decision. I Ready? Would, I didn't even think of Airplane. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It would have been next. I was like, ah, Zucker's Naked Gun. Of course it's Airplane. Okay, sorry. Let's keep it moving. Uh, so I'm just uh, We have a few here I'm picking from. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, no. Excluding Die Hard, best Bruce Willis movie. Last Boy Scout. Uh, final. Ah, uh, sh uh, sh shit. Uh, fifth Element. Why Last Boy Scout? Last Boy Scout is hilarious. It almost seems like a, a airplane esque parody of action films. And Halle Berry gets shot with a machine gun. Luke Besson, man. I mean, look, R Ruby Rod. What's his name? I mean, come on, Chris Tucker. I, 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 do I need to go on? I mean, uh, it's excellent special effects, uh, brilliant acting. The Blue Opera Woman is an iconic moment in sci-fi history. I, I, I mean, I don't know. Oh, uh, uh, freaking the villain. Um, you don't know any of these things, so Last Boy Scout oh, wins. Man. Wait, what? Luke Besson directed it. Who directed the Last Boy Scout? Keywords. You Tony Scott. Even what it is. God damn it. Let's watch it. It's oh, hilarious. Wow, okay. Yeah. This is tough. I, I I was wanting to give it to you, but you were like, I don't know what above. <laughs> I mean, I had so many There's reasons. Stuff. I stuff. gave you way too much time there. Oh, wow, okay. Uh, number five. So is this the tiebreaker? For the game. I liked your is, Chris Walken version. Right? Number five. Now we're tied. Five. Five. He, pulled, he pulled around. Oh, wow. Mark has stormed back. They're now tied. Oh, this is They're now tied five to five. I'm going to throw Can we hold hands while yes, we do this? Yes. <laughs> It's like chopped, but for nerds. <laughs> Number, f here we go. I'm not letting the go. The Green Ranger on Twitter asked, was, was it the Green Ranger? I hope so. <laughs> oh, shit. Is the real Ranger have a job? <laughs> Aren't there nine of them? Ready? Mm -hmm. Best Hollywood Jason. Oh, Jason the first Voorhees? one from Jason Voorhees. No, no, no. Jason, an actor named Jason. Uh, Jason. Jason Schwartzman. Your choice? I'm confused. This isn't a character. This is a performer. Yes. The best Hollywood actor, starting with the name uh, Jason. Oh, Jason Robards. We can let go hands now. <laughs> All the nerds clicked off. They're like, he's lost. He lost. I what? mean, Jason Schwartzman's hilarious, versatile. He's he's pretty much different in every movie yeah, he's in. Yeah, he plays in. short, annoying guy. I in mean, the from past Rushmore to Scott Pilgrim, the guy is just hilarious, ah! amazing. And uh... ah! why wrote Jason Robards? <laughs> oh, because Eugene O'Neill wrote The Iceman Cometh for Jason Robards. Jason Robards is a huge part of the history of acting. He's a he's a titan of acting. Mm -mm. Yeah, no one knows who he is, though. Uh, so I think <laughs> <laughs> he, wins. he was I Max Dugan and Max Dugan Returns. Oh, snap. Uh, I don't want to get dinged for not doing classic, but I, I got to give it to Jason Robards because you didn't really give me anything, what? and I agree. Wait, what? I'm not going to be an ageist. Jason Robards is a legend. But I said Schwartzman was versatile and hilarious. So is Jason Robards. Who is Jason oh, Robards? <laughs> Look him up. Mark wins. Oh, wow. no. Wow. Wow. That's intense. I thought uh, I didn't think I was going to be that. Wow. I'm not going to be an ageist. That is intense. Wow. I know who he is. Wow. That was an upset. Should have yeah. gone Jason Biggs. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I was going to go Jason Connery. That was intense. Kid. Oh. I'm going to get a lot of hate, but Mark, I got your back. Huh? He's a legendary wow. actor. I'm just trying to bring up the We're going to do our own movie, movie fight show. I'm yeah. We're going to do our own movie fight wow. show. Wow. Movie All right. punches. Yeah. That was intense. <laughs> Wow. I'm sure you didn't agree with some of it, but that's what the show's for. Tell us what you didn't agree with. Please also tell us in the comments what you want to see next. Wow, that was amazing. So now, uh, because you won, Mark, that means you're coming back next week to take Mundy on and Mundy and Carlson. No wow, oh, that is going to be intense. Uh, there you are. We've already put you in there. Look at this bracket. They and had that made. Winner of that round is going to take on Madman Merle over there. Merle, what do you think? Did I make a mistake? Uh, what do you think? Do you know who Jason Robards is? Robards. Robards. I yes. said it. Robards. He's a, he's a, he's <laughs> you an, know who he is. He's an Oscar-winning so actor. Names. He yes. was in All the President's Men. He's a lot of great TV Quick work. Quick change. He was really good work. in. 
Yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a great actor. Magnolia, his last film. Uh, but next week is like the the Battle of the Screen Junkies panelists. Yeah. Yes. It's like our three most uh, recurring panelists. This is intense. All right. Well, uh, please again, I want to thank you for watching. That was that was that was hard. That was a tough one. You both played good. Sweaty nuts. Matt, you did okay, but you, you <laughs> got really close. You're gonna come back, Steve. I hope. Please. Sure, of course. Because I I, I think the fans will, will have liked you a lot. I'm not. You will as well, nope. but right. I think he he got a little further than you, so I'm going to invite him back before you. No offense, <laughs> uh, but no, Plus you did great, too, Matt. I want to thank you all for real. Uh, thank you all, I'll Matt pay. Rob uh, at Matt Rob. Yep. right on Twitter. Yep. On Twitter. Anything else you'd like to plug? Uh, yeah, uh, go check out Smosh Games. Uh, some of those are my babies. Uh, YouTube.com/slash Smosh Games. You can check them out. Honest Game Trailers Honest live there, game right? Trailers Matt? live there. Yes. When do those come out, Matt? Hey, that comes out every Tuesday at you one p.m. Pacific time. Did make sense time. that he's here because well, he's you know, fantastic weird. and he helps us do some Honest Game Trailers. What's coming up next? I can't say. You can't Ooh, tease it. Secret. Oh, right. I can tease. We've got uh, a pretty big uh, game coming up uh, this week. Uh, it's, it's an inf- infamous game. It's an infamous Ooh. game. Ooh, Atar- I know what he's is talking it infamous? about. I'm not allowed to talk about no. it. Oh. Atari's Raiders Next of the Lost Ark. Next up, Steve Zaragoza. <laughs> thank you for being here. Tell us what your, your Twitter, please. Uh, my Twitter is at Steve Zaragoza. Uh, and uh, you can find me on the SourceFed and SourceFed Nerd on the YouTube channels. And also, I'm uh, the host of a game show on uh, the channel called Buzzer called Password. Oh, fun. You can watch me there. Like yeah. the original Password? Yeah. Like the password? Word is, is yeah. Jelly Bean. Mm-hmm. Mark and Draco, thank you for being here at Mark and Draco. Correct, Mark with a C. Yep. Anything you'd like to plug here? Uh, well, you can get download Wonder Woman seventy seven digitally from Comicsology. It's uh, the comic book version of the Linda Carter TV show. And every third Saturday of the month at midnight, I'm a judge at the Upright Citizens Brigade for Tournament of Nerds with Hal Rudnick. With Hal Rudnick, very cool. a very good show. Wow. In LA. Please you, go you've look. You've judged it up. a couple of times as well. We're going it's on a, our seventh year now. It's a blast. If you're ever in LA, go to UCB and check out Tournament of Nerds for Hal and see Mark there. It's a fantastic. Wow, I gotta show. go, dude. Uh, please uh, oh follow uh, Dan Merle on the Merle on, uh, at Merle Dan on the Dan Cam. Yes. How do you like the new digs here? This is pretty amazing, right? I, I love them, and I I would just like my plug would be like I know that there are probably a few things that are different, for or that 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 we're working out from our last show. So before the commenters decide to hate us, hate us, to give us give, give us, us a few weeks, give us a minute. <laughs> Can you give us a minute? A hot minute, please, mm-hmm. and live long and hashtag fast. give us a minute. Hashtag give us a minute. Uh, and thank you. Uh, please follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Andy Signor. I uh, love your suggestions. I'm sure you yell at me at what I did wrong. But I, I'm also curious. Do you know who Mark picked? Do we know who Jason Robards is? Come <laughs> tell us on Twitter. Google him. Because he's he be, Jason he's Robards should be act- trending. He's a classic actor. Uh, who, who last time we did this, Lonesome Dove. It's a lo- it's the Lonesome Dove. If Jason, you didn't get it then, but I gave it to Mark now. Uh, before we go, uh, please check out next week. Oh, before we go, next week's Screen Junkies show is epic. Patton Oswald is going to be on, Ooh. and he's going to give us his ultimate dream sequel. I promise you it's so good. He is so good, guys. We tried to get him here maybe someday, but we got him on a Screen Junkie show. He gave us so much. We got two episodes upcoming. He's going to talk about Aquaman, Marvel. All so m- I can't even. I'm so excited for you guys to see it because I saw it, and it's so fun. So get excited. We're so grateful to Patton. Uh, check out his book, Silver Screen Fiend. It's so good. Yeah, that book uh, is fantastic. It's so fantastic good. Fantastic read. Uh, but we'll, you'll learn more about it in him and Screen Junkies on Thursday, and uh, uh, please t- stay tuned for that. So anyway, thanks for being here. Thanks to the new studio. Thanks for all the help, everybody. Have a great day. We'll see you next week. Every podcast we put on YouTube comes with this kick-ass graphic, listing all the topics your favorite Screen Junkies podcasters are talking about. If you click the topics, you can skip around and choose your own podcast battle royale. Go ahead, try them all. If you haven't already, subscribe to Screen Junkies on YouTube to join us for future fights. Or if you prefer to listen on iTunes, click the logo to download an audio version. 